1965 GMC step side equipped with the 305E two barrel Stromberg carburetor pretty cool V6 emblems on the hood I go any forum that I go on all I hear is negative things about these engines absolutely sick and tired of hearing it four miles of the gallon boat anchor no power junk pull it out put a 350 Chevy in I am absolutely fed up with hearing it I've had four of these engines over the years I've had one for 25 years it's never been apart I use it every day in a work truck I am absolutely sick and tired of hearing the negative comments. These people are clueless. They do not know what they're doing. Unbelievable. What you have to do when you buy a 50 year old truck, first thing you have to do is you must, number one, you must run a compression test to see what you are doing, see what you're dealing with. Number two, you must Pull a rocker cover off. Pull both rocker covers off. The engine's running. Hear how it's clicking? Guess what? That's how it's supposed to sound. If there is no noise coming from those rocker arms, the valves are tightened down too much. They are hanging open. It'll still run fine, but it won't have any power. The charge is coming out the valves instead of going towards pushing the piston down come on get with it people next thing you're gonna do is you get down low observe the movement of all rocker arms if some aren't moving that far guess what you got a bad camshaft next thing you're gonna do I've had four of these motors come to me over the years I've used four in four different trucks. Three out of four have come to me with the valves improperly adjusted. Always adjusted, seem to be adjusted down too far. After running a compression test, you say, oh boy, 60 PSI at each cylinder. Oh, I got a junk motor. I adjust the valves properly, run a compression test again, 125 in all six banks. You must adjust the valves properly. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you I'm going to show you people how to adjust the valves. Everyone just seems to just say, "Ah, junk, get rid of it." I am sick, absolutely sick and tired of hearing it. I'm going to show you people, you blockheads out there, how to adjust the valves. I want to read some positive things about these engines. See these 305s right here? The best motors that have ever been made made from 1959 all the way up to 1974 reason they got rid of them is they were too good this motor here makes 120 foot pounds of no 320 foot pounds of torque at 1600 rpms that is simply unbelievable okay now i'm going to go step by step and show you you knuckleheads out there how to adjust the valves on a solid lifter 305 V6 engine. First thing you have to do, you got to get the motor up to temperature, totally warmed up. Why? You got steel in there, it expands and contracts. In order to get the proper adjustment on the valves, the motor has to be up to 180 degrees. Let the motor run for about a half hour before you attempt to adjust the valves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in the truck. I'm going to shut it off. The two gauges you're going to need, you need the 12 thousandths right here. 12 thousandths on the intake valves. 18 thousandths on the exhaust. Alright, how do you tell the difference? Here's the top of the rocker arms. Look down here. See that? That's the exhaust. 
that's lined up with this valve. Guess what? That's the exhaust valve. Where's the intake valve? Here's the runner coming in. That's the intake going to this valve. Okay, simple as that. So, all right, see this one on the end? There's no tension on that. Okay? So let's look at it. It's an exhaust valve, so guess what? We're gonna use a number 18, 18 thousandths. It's this one here where my thumb is. I'm gonna slide that in. See, I've already adjusted these. What you do is you take a 7 16 socket, you turn this nut here in and out till you get your 18 thousandths. Once again, I can't stress this enough, 18 thousandths for a fully warmed up engine. If you do it when it's cold, you're wasting your time because this thing moves all over the place. You ha must be up at temperature. Now we're going to move to this intake valve. See, the rocket is starting to push down slightly, so we can't measure that one right now. If you're at top dead center, you can do both of them at the same time because both valves are fully closed, so you can make your adjustment. It's much easier just to run the engine, stop it, than do the ones that have no tension on them. See, this exhaust valve has tension on it, so that tells me the intake has none. So we can go ahead, slide our feeler gauge in there. Twelve thousandths. Then we're going to go down the end here. We got a little tension on the intake valve, so that tells me I can adjust, I can check the measurement on the exhaust valve. I'm going to slide that in there. Can you see that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on just this one on the end right now because it's easier to see. So right now on the end I'm going to go over this again so you can get this through your thick skulls. There is no tension on this valve here. Once again exhaust. How do I know that? It's lined up with the exhaust. Okay? So that should be 18 thousandths. You're better off with a loose fit and feel gauge. You're better off having a little loose than having it tight because the valves are going to hang open and you're not going to get any power because the valves are not sealing off for the charge. Make sense? So here's my 18 in my hand right here. I'm going to slide that in. See how it slides in there? I've already adjusted it. You turn that nut in and out. Has kind of coarse threads on it so it just kind of stays wherever you leave it. That's the way it's designed. Now, you might say, hey Dave, how do I do the uh, intake valve while I'm here? Guess what? I can't do it because there's a little tension on there. We want to have the exhaust, we want to have the exhaust valve rock around pushing down. That way we know there's no tension on the intake. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and start the truck up again. See how nice they start? When everything's up to snuff, listen to that again. Listen to this. See? I'm going to shut it off again. We're going to go back to that. We're going to go back to that number one cylinder again. And see, we didn't have it land where we want, so we have to go back again. I mean, you can do this too. You can reach in and turn the fan if you want. If you prefer to do it that way. Get each one the top dead center, then adjust them both at the same time. I, I like doing it this way. It's easier. You don't have to bend over the thing. All you do is start it. You got to go in and out of the truck just a couple of times, and you get them. Yeah, eventually you get them all. Took a couple of tries, but you can see. I'm going to show you a different camera. You can see that the exhaust valve is being pressed down to open to let the charge out. That tells me that the intake valve is at rest with no tension on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our number 12 thousandths feeler gauge and slide that in there. 
Once again, I already adjusted these. 